Hi. Um, if you look here on the screen, I apologize. Should have already done this. I, I, a really wonderful family member um, bought this for me. Uh, it's a Kindle um, keyboard, and he bought it for me yesterday. Uh, we have a rule in my family, a family tradition, <laughs> as of four years ago or so, where we don't buy gifts for each other. We just give to a charity. So this is not a, he made it very clear to me this wasn't a Christmas gift. Um, and I started not to take it, but it's just so wonderful, and I just appreciate it so much. So this was a gift, and um, it has been great. I've had it for less than 24 hours now, and I don't know how I survived without it. But that is not the focus of this video. Um, the focus of the video is the discussion between Hannibal Barca and Do Not God, and how I think it's kind of lost its focus, and I'm proposing something that may or may not get off the ground. If it doesn't, I don't care because it's getting me to think about these things, and I think it's very important to think about these things, whether anybody else wants to do what you're doing or not. So um, I'm proposing that we all try to find a particular book that came out in 2009 at your local library, maybe, or um, a resell shop, or uh, from Kindle, you, I mean, from Amazon used, or from a used book site, someplace it, without spending too much money or going to your library. Uh, it's called Sex and War, and it is about the topics we're discussing, and it might keep the discussion focused. I have to say that the premise in the book is probably closer to Do Not Gods, but there is a big difference, so far as I can tell, and I haven't started reading it yet. Um, let me just turn this on and show you that it's loaded on here. Um, it was a lot cheaper. I, it's the second book here. It's called, um, as I said, S uh, Sex and War, How Biology Explains Warfare and Terrorism and Offers a Path to a Safer World. Uh, and it's by Malcolm Potts, as I said, a professor at Southern Cal and University of California, uh, whose background is Cambridge, and um, a journalist named um, Thomas Hayden. Uh, I'm going to read just very short excerpts. I haven't finished the book yet. When I do, I will, and I know probably nobody else is interested in this, but I keep wanting to discuss ideas without screaming at each other, which is just one of my hangups. I'm sorry. But, um, so what I'll do is post some questions when I finish the book. And really, I mean, reading on a Kindle is amazing. Um, so I'll probably finish. I've finished almost the first book, and I ordered this 24 hours ago. It makes it life a lot easier, especially if all you want to do is read. <laughs> and my little bit of disposable income always goes into books anyway. Um, so, you know, this is just like being liberated. So um, when I've finished this, I will compose um, a fast list of questions. If you want to discuss those particular questions, that's great. If you read the book and you have other questions or you have other ideas about what you read, that'd be great too. And as I said, this may go nowhere. <laughs> I, I accept that. Um, but I, I think these things are fun. At least they're fun for me. Even if I'm talking to myself, even if I'm just having a solipsistic discussion, um, these things are fun for me. Um, anyway, so this reviewer, his name is uh, Dennis Luttrell, and this is posted on the English website, the UK website. Um, he's one of the top 50 reviewers. He's from Southern California, not that that matters. <clears throat> Here's what he says in just very short excerpts. Potts' main thesis is that all men have the potential to kill other people to get what they want or because they are told to kill, or because they have dehumanized their victims. All men, you, me, and Professor Potts himself, could be in Darfur slicing people up with machetes. All that is required is that the victim be seen as a member of an outgroup as opposed to an in-group in which we belong. This is a startling thesis, one that sets the standard social science model in which it is 
said we have to be carefully taught to kill on its head. What Potts says is that the violence we have seen throughout human history is innate. An evolved trait that was once useful for hominoid, hominids sorry, in the tribal setting. This is also the thesis of evolutionary psychology. Instead of learning to kill or being taught to kill, we need to be taught not to kill. We don't usually kill members of our family or friends because they are part of an in-group with which we identify. Now that to me is really interesting and um, as I said this is probably closer to do not God's position. Um, so, but the, the difference is that Potts and Hayden do not seem to see this innate tendency to violence as completely uh, biological determinism in, in the way that Do Not God presents his thesis usually. Now, I might have misread Do Not God. Um, I try to follow his his uh, video arguments, but I get confused with uh, some of the things he asserts, so I'm not sure. Um, it, and then one one thing he does <clears throat> say, which also sounds, I think, similar to uh, Do Not God's position. He says, our psyches are governed by evolved Stone Age emotions, similar to what we see in chimpanzees as they conduct their horrific raids on isolated individuals from neighboring groups, ripping and tearing their victims apart with their bare hands and teeth. Potts calls this team aggression, a strategy which has been perfected in human beings. Men bond together and use their greater numbers to kill members of other tribes so as to gain resources, such as territory, slaves, and women to impregnate. Um, so as I said, I haven't read the book, and I'm really looking forward to it. But I have read the review, um, and it will be linked in the low bar. And I think it has some really good insights, even if you don't want to bother reading the whole book. It's a long book. It's over 400 pages. So uh, the review goes on to say, fundamentalist teachings, whether Christian, Muslim, or any other religion, end up restricting and controlling women, which in turn makes war and terrorism more likely. The 21st century is seeing a clash of cultures. But that clash is not between Islam and Christendom. Rather, it is between fundamentalism and reason. I think that's a point that really we should all calm down and maybe think about um, because there is a clash between fundamentalism and reason. And fundamentalism just means you're being asked not to think about something that's really hard to think about anyway. And just accept somebody else's ideas and don't question them. That's the, that's the key to fundamentalism. You, if you question things, um, you're going to be made part of an outgroup and you're going to be harassed, probably. So that is one of the hallmarks of fundamentalism. Rather than discussing things, you're told what to think. And if you object, then you're told that you're stupid or, or whatever. Um, to shut you up, basically, because you're not agreeing with the, the predominant tenets of fundamentalism. He seems to end the book with a study of Easter Island and what happened on Easter Island, and he proposes it as analogous to what we are doing on planet Earth in general. Uh, you may or may not agree with him. Uh, there is one one-star review uh, which you, you you know can look for if you go to the side that doesn't like this premise and doesn't agree with what Potts is saying. Um, but what happened on Easter Island is a small group of Polynesians uh, washed ashore and um, they they came up on Easter Island and when they came there were flightless birds and. So they were there was plentiful food, that it was forested, um, and they systematically 
uh, didn't think about the depletion of the environment they were inhabiting. Finally, everything was depleted. Um, and that is what caused the, I mean, they were there with no wood to make boats, no way to get off the island. They depleted everything. Uh, the only reason we remember Easter Island mainly is because they did create, they were, there was a creative period in which they built their mysterious heads. Um, so that's why we remember them. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> as I said, I haven't read it. I'm planning to, and I'm planning to post a video at that time in which I try to focus the discussion on specific issues, whether or not you've read the book, that uh, Potts and Hayden bring up. Because I think, you know, it's we've got to figure out what we're doing and stop trying to um, score ego points and be right. Um, a lot of what Potts and Hayden say, um, just reading the review itself, I'm not sure I agree with some of the some of the things they say at the end, uh, but I'm not sure yet because I haven't finished and I haven't even started, so and it's 400 pages. But the wonderful thing about this candle is um, if you want to, and I hate to admit this, but I do a lot of uh, I like to read as I get on my exercise machines, which makes me sound like a decadent middle class idiot, I know, but it's true. So um, this one will actually start reading it to you. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to allow ratings on this. And I just want to say quickly that the reason I don't put my head on camera, and I know there's been a lot of chit chat about my refusal to do that now, is because I want to discuss ideas and not whether um, somebody thinks the front of my head is okay or disgusting or whatever. Um, it's gone to John Steinbeck. That's what just happened. If you don't um, use it for a while, it turns itself off. So, and it goes to these wonderful screensavers. Um, anyway, I, I, uh, I'm going to post this. And the reason I don't allow ratings is because I have a lot of troll activity. So I don't allow ratings. Um, which is, you know, maybe my shortcoming. I only erase comments if somebody has said something really um, insulting and pointless and off topic, which happens. Um, and I don't care what anyone thinks of the front of my head, whether they think I'm aesthetically pleasing. I also don't care uh, what you think uh, about any other part of me. So, uh, you know, when somebody calls me a skanky cunt, which they have done incessantly, uh, that has nothing to do with what's being discussed. And um, I think it shouldn't happen. And I'm just going to go on here and ramble because I think it happened. It, it's a way to get people to shut up, to, to, to insult them. Uh, that's what I think. Now, you can think what you want. But, for example... Um, too Cool For You posted a video. I didn't agree with what she was saying, but what she got back uh, was a lot of stuff about how her, um, she had a, a, a diseased vagina. I was just amazed. It happens too much here on YouTube that a discussion is derailed, and whether or not you are saying this is that ad hominem is okay or is not okay, or what constitutes uh, ad hominem, insulting somebody, and somebody pointed this out, is like poisoning the well. You have convinced people about the character of this person. You have told them what to think about this person. They, if you are more popular than the person trying to talk about ideas, then they will believe your account of who this person is. And they will come and attack the person because this popular YouTuber has told them to, basically. And if not told them to in so many words, has told them to by insulting this person and trying to dehumanize this person um, in order to invalidate this person's argument. If you on YouTube want to make that a valid way to enter into an argument, nobody will stop you.
but I don't consider it valid. And um, any videos I've taken down, I have done so because I'm tired of the insults about people, the way people think the front of my head looks. Um, and instead of what I'm trying to talk about. So I've stopped with ratings and I've stopped putting my head on camera for that reason. Um, I'm sorry if any of this sounded arrogant. I don't intend it to be. I want to stay on topic. And the topic, as far as I can tell, is war and sex and the relationship between aggression in our prehistoric history and our present state of affairs, which isn't great. Our present state of affairs is pretty scary. Um, and I don't think extreme advocations of extreme positions uh, like getting rid of all life helps anything. Um, I think we are in a dysfunctional enough environment that we should be working hard to make it less dysfunctional. Um, advocating extinguishing all life is not a way to make it less dysfunctional, in my opinion. So this is a rambly, very long video. Um, I want to discuss ideas. I want to get back to ideas. I don't want to be derailed by all this nonsense. Um, if you don't want to do that, then ignore this. If anybody, even one person, is willing to do this with me, um, I think that's great. And I should have organized something better than this, and I should have edited something, and I should have made it real, you know, snappy and about half the length of this video. Um, but I just don't feel like it today. And I want to get back to reading. Um, so I'll be doing another video soon. You guys take care of yourselves. Bye.